fake 3D letters. So, it's fake. After Effects can't actually render 3D geometry. So what we're going to do is we're going to fake things being 3D by using many layers pushed back in Z space. And when I say Z space, that means depth wise. We can arrange flat things in 3D. So basically we're just stacking many layers of flat things on top of each other. And you'll see what that means as we get more into it. So let me just go ahead and open up a new composition. Okay, and the big thing to do here is to keep things organized. We're going to be using maybe 20, maybe 30 layers, depending on how deep and how detailed you want it to be. So you're going to want to keep everything very well organized. And that starts by keeping everything pre-comped. So let's say words is what we want to use for our word. Let's uh, crank up the size here of the words. And uh, yeah, I think we're away at the races here. So words is what we're going to use. This is going to be our content of the layers that we end up making. So let me just get this thing uh, situated into the middle using the align. And first thing to do, you've got the word words. You're going to pre-compose this and you can do that by going um, command shift C. That'll pre-comp it. We'll call this 3D content so that if we go in and edit this 3D content, we'll be able to edit all of the layers that we're going to make. So we go back here, 3D content. So we're going to duplicate this many times going back in space. Now before we do that, let's have a new adjustment layer. Let's call this layer control and put it below the other layer. On this layer, let's give this a slider control because we want to make sure that we can still change the depth of how, you know, spread out everything is without having to go back and edit each of these layers individually. So we've got a slider control on here and we're going to use expressions to make our lives easier. So call up the position, check this box over here to make it 3D. So now we have three things on the position. Alt click on the position stopwatch and type in value plus open square bracket zero comma zero comma index times and index times what the slider control down here and close off the square bracket hit return so right now basically it's adding zero zero and zero to this thing let's set the slider to one right there and now you can see that it's going to times the index number of the layer, which in this case is a 1, by the slider control, which is a 1, and so that value is going to be 1. Now if I start duplicating this, as you can see, I duplicate it whole whack of times. We look here, its Z value, or Z value, is now 14. And if we look at the top view, we can see we have a big thick stack of layers growing. And let's say we want to push them further apart, we change the slider here to like 10, suddenly our stack is getting pushed deeper and deeper. So that'll allow us to push things back and forth as much as we'd like, like an accordion, to areas where we're, we can tolerate the space between the layers, you know, and the number of layers. So let's just, you know, amp this up to like 20. So that looks about right, 10 there, all right, put us back onto the active camera. So you can see now we're starting to get that little depth that's coming in here. Everything's starting to get pushed back and we're pretty much done. You've made something that's more or less three dimensional. Now, if you want to use this in a comp, select all of these layers. Again, Command Shift C and we're going to call this 3D depth or 3D object or something like that so that we're able to know that in this comp we're dealing with a 3D object and then click on the 3D switch and then click on this button here under the star which means collapse transformations so now we're able to do something a little bit like this where we're able to rotate the shape we've made and when you rotate it, you can see one of the limitations of this technique right off the bat, that 
it's actually a whole bunch of layers going back, which can create a cool look. But if you want to hide that, the amount that you're able to push the layers back is going to be a trade-off between the space and then the angle you observe the words at. So in this case, we're kind of running out of road, you know, right around here when that little glitch starts to come up where you can see that these are in fact just a collection of flat layers. So you don't want to push this technique too hard, but at the same time, this is a cheap way if you don't want to invest in a 3D program. Now, if you want to kind of make the look a little bit better, you could do something like apply a um, bevel alpha to uh, literally all the layers. So copy your effect, V paste the effect, and then we get this nice little gradient cutting in there that comes across. If we look at it back here, you can see that also exacerbates some of that banding that happens. So you might want to go back to your 3D object layer, go in there and maybe blur some of the middle things, uh, give them a uh, fast blur to some of those. But don't blur the first and last uh, object in the stack. You want those to be as sharp as possible to better define the bounds of the shape. Now, let's see, we'll just add this little fast blur this thing in the middle, give it something like a two, copy that fast blur, move it across, give it to everybody except the first and last. How's that looking? It's looking a little bit better. Now, how you define the look is up to you. If you want to come in here and start applying textures to some of these things, like if you want to go into your original content, for example, and start to change things up, maybe give it a thicker stroke a little bit, like so, something like that, or like no stroke. When you edit anything inside that first pre-comp we made, then you go back, you're gonna see it's affected everything you've done, which is pretty great because maybe you didn't want it to say words, you wanted it to say E.C. Abrams rocks and is really cool, and you know, we just don't have enough space to talk about how awesome I am, but you know, now it says it in 3D, and that's pretty cool. Um, let's just give it a little bit, a little bit of this action going on, and uh, yeah, now people can clearly see how much I rock uh, based on this tutorial. Really, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments, tweet them at me, and I just wanted to say a big thanks to everybody who subscribes, because all of them are awesome people, you're all great, and uh, just thanks for all your support for what I do, and uh, you guys have an awesome day. Uh, enjoy faking 3D letters and tricking people into thinking you own Cinema 4D, which is expensive. Have a good one, and I'll see you around the internet.